I'm so glad you finally came. I've been waiting for hours. I was starting to count the tiles on the ceiling just to stay sane. I mean, that isn't really your fault though. You got here right on time. I just thought, you know, let me come here a few hours early to make sure I don't miss you. Better safe than sorry, right? <laughs> I wouldn't want to miss the best day of my life after all. And um, honestly, I'm just so glad that you even came at all. I was worrying maybe you were going to miss what I put in your pants. You know, the letter I left in your pocket. Or worse, maybe you would find it, but just think it's a prank or something and ignore it. I mean, it kind of sounds like a prank, doesn't it? I mean, what kind of letter invites you to your own basement, am I right? <laughs> I like to think of a very romantic one, but I can see why the location would be cause for skepticism. <laughs> Why am I here? You sound awfully displeased to have an innocent, defenseless girl like me in your basement. But there's no need to coy, because I know all your dirty little secrets. And I think you know exactly why I'm here. <laughs> no, no. I'm not talking about your homework folder. We both know that's just a decoy for what's really on your computer. What I'm really talking about is... just a bit less innocent than that. <laughs> good acting though, you're very good at faking it. Still silent? Tell you what, I'll give you a hint. You're something that rhymes with... talker. <laughs> no? You're still playing dumb? <sighs> You're so cute when you're lying through your teeth, and you're even cuter when you're sweating like that. I have to say though, I thought I'd have to work harder to get you like that. You look uncomfortable in those clothes. Well, okay then, here's another hint. It's just a little off from talker. It just needs one more, say, maybe at the start of the word? And it's an S? <laughs> I always love it when you resist to the end. But alright, I'll hear me since you enjoy being such a tease. Do you recognize this picture? <laughs> I sure do. It's me. But something's wrong. Can you tell what? You see, I don't remember having this picture taken of me. In fact, it looks like it was taken in my house. But I live alone. I should have been all alone when this picture was taken. Do you have any idea who could have taken it? <laughs> my legs are shaking. Just think about what could happen to a sweet, vulnerable girl like me who is the target of a stalker. <laughs> No? Still doesn't ring a bell? <laughs> That's hard to believe. But if you insist that you don't know what I'm talking about then, okay. Wink wink. Yes, wink wink is said. <sighs> That's so funny though. Because, actually, I know a bit about dealing with photos myself. For instance, a lot of the time, you can look at the reflections of things in the photo to see what you'd normally think wasn't in the photo. And, well, I know it's too small to make out in this photo, but if you were to zoom in right over here where I'm pointing, you'd actually be able to see the reflection of the person taking the picture. Whoever took it should really be more careful. Oh, you poor thing. You're shaking. I hope that's from excitement. And I have a separate photo here, where I zoomed in and enhanced the reflection. It's so strange, though. I could swear that this almost looks like... You? Would you like to take a closer look yourself? <laughs> you don't have to snatch it. Be gentle, I was just giving it to you. So, are you still going to pretend to be innocent? 
Well, if that isn't enough, I also have your journal here. See, look. It has your handwriting and everything. You left it by your open window, so I thought it was a present. It wasn't hard to crawl on through. Well, other than my hips getting a bit stuck. What? Yes, of course. How did you think I knew all about you being a stalker? I'm a bit... Well, I like to think of myself as, uh, devoted. But obviously I'm a stalker too. I've been watching you for a very long time. Far longer than you've been stalking me for. How did you think I knew all about you and your little antics? And speaking of antics... You've got quite the collection of antics here in this journal. Following me home every night? Going through my laundry? Why, you even collected the candy wrappers that I threw away! And I thought I would be the one handling junk in this relationship. Here, I'll read it for you. I think I'll skip the excessively lewd parts, though... <laughs> that doesn't leave much to read. Not that I blame you. Hold on, sorry. It's just taking a lot longer to find a somewhat modest part than I thought. Oh! Saving that for later. Okay, here we go. This is relatively less indecent than the other parts. <clears throat> she left for home four minutes later than usual today. As usual, I followed stealthily from behind to make sure she made her home safely. Whenever it was possible without getting caught, I traced her exact footsteps. Skydivers would be jealous of the adrenaline rush it gives me, following in her footsteps. It makes me feel so close to her. At one point, I noticed she shed a hair. Obviously, I took it for my collection. I flirted with the idea that perhaps she left it for me on purpose. A gift for my devotion. Speaking of gifts, a real gift would be if she... Okay, and then it gets super lewd again. But you get the idea. I'll spare you that part. There was still one part I had really wanted to read to you, though. Oh, yes, this is it. The poem. It really touched my heart, among other things. Here, listen for yourself. A tree grew an apple so juicy and sweet that the entire forest danced for the treat. The forest... Every last tree laughed with glee, but not me. My beating heart would not leave me be, for I saw the insects I so deeply despise fluttering around with wretched lust in their eyes, so I climbed past the vial buzzing in my ears and stole the apple to my haven, safe from fears. <laughs> oh, that's just so sweet. I want to hang it on my fridge and maybe keep it in my wallet or something. But what's most sweet of all is that the meaning seems to be about kidnapping me. I mean, the next and most recent entry in your journal seemed to prove that. Look, it says right here. She went home alone again today. As much as I wanted to stare only at her, I also had to keep watch because I'm not the only one keeping my eyes on her. There's no shortage of creeps who no doubt want to harm her. I've always tried to give her the distance she needs to be comfortable. I only took a portion of her wrappers, not all of them. I always made sure to only take the laundry she herself was getting rid of, and I've always followed from behind at a respectful distance, even though I wanted to get closer. And now, that distance is too much, and even by her side... I won't be able to properly protect and take care of her if she's in the outside world where she can be attacked from so many different directions and avenues. So, I'll take her somewhere safe. And my basement is very secure. And that's all you wrote. You know, I've never believed in fate until I met you. But now, I know we're fated to be together because I've never felt more validated than you've made me. You see, I actually wanted to kidnap you as well. And I was going to, believe me. But now that I've seen you feel that same way towards me, 
that gives me the security I need to make myself more vulnerable. And, you know, not have you under lock and key. I... I, I still have anxiety about not securing you. About not making sure that you're in my basement where no one else can get to you, but... I want to make sure you feel like you've made me feel. I want to show you that you're not alone. That your emotions and desires are completely legitimate. That's why I'm here. I thought I'd save you the travel of kidnapping me and just meet in your own basement. And show you that I'm okay with being yours. That I am yours. <laughs> now, you said you wanted to take care of me? <laughs> now, just how are you going to do that? <laughs>